Thank you very much. It's always good doing the after lunch session as well, knowing that everyone's fed and watered. So, uh, and this, I promise this will be fairly, very light. I'm not going to dazzle you with data or stats or anything. Um, there's two things I wanted to cover really today. Firstly, I guess Twitter's new positioning, where we're at in the market, and I guess our point of difference versus some of the competition and why you probably want to be using us at the moment. And then secondly, we're going to talk about how to win with Twitter as well. So a lot of the stuff, the basics, but just getting it right and some great examples of that as well. And then hopefully we'll have a couple of minutes at the end for some questions. But I guess... As with any kind of tech company, it take, it's taken us a long time to kind of find our feet. Um, quite a few years, to be honest. Um, and we found out that, yeah, Twitter is what's happening. You just have to load up Twitter. You look, the first question you get asked is what's happening. So we thought, yeah, right, OK. That's our strap line. And it works. Twitter is what's happening now. Um, it's a live public. It's a public platform. It's an open platform. And that's the key, key difference for us as well. Um, so I'm just going to kick off, in case you've been living under a rock for the last few months, to show you some of the biggest things that have been happening on the platform. Ariana, we all want to say thank you to you for being so strong and so wonderful. And uh, you've been singing a lot for us, so I think we in Britain want to sing for you. This is called Don't Look Back in Anger, and this is from us to you. I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms. And I will. Jessica, you and Dom are about to go on. Yeah, we're about to go on a first date. Hashtag. First eight nerves, one on one. Oh. <laughs> it's how do democracies respond to those scandals? Uh, and what will it mean for uh, for the wider region? I think one of your children has just walked in. And you know what? Politics has changed, and politics isn't going back into the box where it was before. General election. You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake. Well, Twitter works. A lot's happened in the last few months, hasn't it? Um, definitely the BBC, my favourite as well. But a lot of it happened on Twitter first as well. So it's where a lot of journalists will come to Twitter first and also fans of what's happening. People who want to know what's happening in the world right now come to Twitter first for that as well. Um, so whether it be the general election or the heady heights of Love Island. Who watched Love Island? Come on, you can admit it here. <laughs> Guilty. Guilty as sin. Um, sit, we had nine million tweets about that. It's an incredible, incredible show for the platform. But it just shows you the diversity of the platform as well. So everything from, yeah, from General Election right through to Love Island, through to the BAFTAs, um, and then through to Wimbledon as well. It all plays out on the platform. Um, and if you, you haven't gone onto Twitter recently, please do go on and check it out. It's lots of new, new stuff on there happening at the moment as well. And we've kind of found our voice in market as well. So we recently won a Can Lion as well um, for our whole idea of what's happening being what's happening, actually telling our story to market as well. So it seems like everyone is kind of understanding what Twitter is actually here for now and why you should be using it as well. So a couple of good examples of, of how we actually looked in market there. Um, one of the big questions we always get asked, and especially, especially with agencies as well and clients, publishers, brands are always asking us, like, what's the difference between us and, and our competition out there as well? And quite simply, I think it's a really, really good way of putting it. T um, Twitter is all about look at that, okay? It's not about look at me. So you're not going to find lenses on Twitter. We tried stickers, didn't work. Um, it's not the platform for that, okay? If you want to talk about your family barbecue, see pictures of friends and the newborns and the latest pets, that's not what's going to happen on Twitter, okay? Twitter's about look at that rather than look at me. It's about people sharing inter influential stories on the platform as well. Another question we get asked as well is about size and scale. Again, a common, a common perception in markets that Twitter isn't growing. Twitter's dying. It's not got a big, play. It's not got a big audience at all. Our audience numbers are growing. They're growing for, they've grown for the sixth consecutive quarter as well. So this is looking at daily active users. What well, that's actually telling us is there's more people on the platform spending more time more often as well. And that's growing every single quarter. Um, and in terms of the actual people who are on the audience, I guess on the platform, why people are coming to it, we do have one of the most influential groups of people on the platform. Um, so everyone from the Pope to Jamie Oliver to Sadiq Khan, um, Trump obviously, um, there's no Trump supporters here, are there? Um, but 
You don't get a platform with that many people, that many, that broad reach of influential people on it anywhere else in the world. It happens here on Twitter, okay? And also our audience, we believe, are highly influential as well. So in the, audience, in the UK at the moment, we've got 23 million uh, monthly active users. Again, that's growing, that's Comscore numbers, but growing every single quarter, every single month at the moment. And I guess, why do we believe they're the most influential? Because they like to share. They're influential amongst their peers, okay? So 64% of, of these users have actually shown their friend, friends something on Twitter in the last, in the last week. And nine out of 10 of these people have changed their opinion, made decisions about what they've seen based on what they've seen on Twitter. So again, in terms of influence, we're a really, really powerful platform about this. And we see that as well in our advertising. We see that with our brands, with their results as well, whether it be in Nielsen brand effect studies that we're running or literally OSI studies. We see that all the time. Twitter does help change influence, change opinion as well. So I guess the difference between us and some of our competitors in market is that when people come to Twitter, they're in a discovery mindset. And what I mean about that is Twitter is your newsfeed, okay? So when you know, you do know what you're going to get because you know the people you're following on there. You know the magazines you're following. You know the radio stations you're following. You know the presenters you're following. You know the sports stars you're following on there. Um, but pe when people come to Twitter, they know they're in a discovery mindset, okay? They know they're going to find out something new about the stuff they love. Very, very simple, okay? And from the research that we've done as well, external research on this, we know that that makes our users more attentive, more responsive and more trusting than our closest competitor. So really, really powerful platform, a powerful platform for ad recall, and ad recall we know is strongly related to sales as well. So a really good platform to be advertising on at the moment. When you get mass influence coupled with discovery mindset, we believe it's one of the most powerful platforms in market to be placed in your brand. Okay. So enough of the sales stuff. That's kind of where we're at at the moment, and I guess that's our positioning in market. Hopefully, that's really, really clear. For me, I've been at Twitter about three and a half years now, and I think it's the clearest proposition we've actually had, really, really understanding our brands and understanding our audience to give you the best possible um, opportunity to promote your content as well. So this is why brands, publishers, broadcasters alike come to the platform. And I saw this article last week in The Drum, don't know if anyone saw this, um, about BT Sport. So we're taking on a lot more broadcasters now. Video, as you'll see, hopefully you saw, see from Facebook today and from Google, video is the future. It's definitely, definitely the future from our platform as well. So much video being, in, um, being engaged with and being shared across our platform. It's arguably the fastest growing thing on a platform at the moment. So when you look at BT Sport here, um, it's a great quote from their COO here, Jamie Hindhow, basically just saying that Twitter is a perfect amplification tool for their product. And you can see that with publishers as well. It works time and time again for them as well in terms of getting the right message out there to the right audience at the right time. Unlike some of the other platforms out there, Twitter's not seen as a threat. It's seen as an amplification tool. So there's nowhere else in the world where you can get BT content as live or actually live in terms of the score show itself um, on our platform. Nowhere else you can get that. And it's the same with Sky Sports as well. We just signed a partnership with ITV as well. So broadcasters like are coming to our platform to be able to put their content on there, okay? And I guess as brands and as publishers, there's two ways that you can make Twitter work for you, okay? Firstly, I guess, is to be what's happening. Um, this is probably the toughest thing to do on the platform. To be what's happening, you need to be creating content. You need to be creating, I guess, live moments um, and stuff that's really, really going to work on the platform but is your own content, okay? So a great example of that, something that happened last week, was Burberry. So a bit of a fashion theme going on today. Um, nothing to do with me, but I just thought I'd put out some recent examples of what's happening at the moment in London. So London Fashion Week. Um, Burberry, kind of a flagship brand on the platform um, and wanted to bring their fashion show live to our audience on Twitter, Saturday night at seven o'clock. And we decided to push our first live stream uh, partnership out with them as well. So we kicked off with a really, really simple activation. And you'll see loads and loads of publishers, loads and loads of brands actually be doing this on the platform now. It's a great way to be using the platform, great way to kind of be setting a reminder for your audience as well. So they did this very, very simple activation of being hard to remind, literally clicking on the heart and you'll be sent a reminder. You'll be sent a personal reminder for when the show is about to start. So this is an example of that happening on the platform. And then at seven o'clock on Saturday night, everyone's pretty nervous, making sure everything's gonna be working properly. You get an HD quality broadcast 
of the actual show itself. Um, and look, fashion's weird, right? Is anyone working fashion here? Sorry, that's, that's why they kicked off with chairs and bird noises. It definitely wasn't my advice on that. Um, but we had this incredible, incredible fashion show brought to you by Burberry, had tons of engagement, um, over 350,000 unique views. That's more views than some of the Sky channels would be dreaming of getting, um, especially at seven o'clock on a Saturday night as well. So incredible amount of engagement as well. When we did the summertime ball with Capital and Vodafone earlier this year, we had three quarters of a million unique views coming to the platform as well. So in terms of like the appetite for video um, and for being what's happening on the platform, I'd say it's never been greater. Great soundtrack with the Petrol Boys as well. Um, so that's one way of using Twitter, actually being what's happening. For that time period, Burberry on Saturday night were what's happening on Twitter. And they made it so, so easy for their audience to engage and maximize their audience as well in terms of setting the heart to remind. The second way of doing it is I guess, to be surrounded by what's happening. And again, I'll give you a little example of how people are doing that, how brands are doing it on the platform at the moment. So being what's happening and being surrounding what's happening is about being prominent in the timeline. And obviously the finest way of doing that is pushing video into the timeline. I think there's some great examples of this today. Um, obviously, if you do want to know more about that, business.twitter.com, I would say is one of the best resources. We've just kind of revamped that, revamped that area of the site. Um, and it's amazing in terms of what you can be doing on the platform at the moment. So I'm not going to go for any formats and stuff today. But if you want to be what's happening, they're the two best ways of doing it on the platform. Second part, I wanted to tell you how to win at Twitter. So again, this is more from an organic basis. What can you be doing? Um, how can you be succeeding on the platform? How do you give yourself the best opportunity to succeed on the platform? Um, first thing first, and something that people get wrong time and time again, simple tweets, okay? Um, nothing's gonna change in terms of the number of characters or anything. Keep your tweets very, very simple, okay? Three questions we always tell brands to be asking as well when they're actually going to compose a tweet on the platform. So what do you want your consumers to think, firstly? Um, what do you want them to do? You have to be explicit on Twitter as well. We get time and time again, people will say, oh, I haven't got many retweets on that, I haven't got many likes or many hearts on that, whatever you want to call them. It's because you haven't asked people to do that as well. If you think of the time span people will have within the timeline on Twitter, you are flicking through it. Life is getting faster and faster. It's definitely not slowing down. You have to be explicit and tell your audience what you want to do. So again, harking back to the Burberry example, it's a really, really great example of that. They're explicit. This is a fashion show. It's happening at seven o'clock. Hard to remind and we'll tell you when it is. Don't have to think about it again, right? It's beautiful activation and it works. And then lastly, how do you want them to feel? And I guess the best way of doing that is absolutely with video. Videos or GIFs, GIFs work brilliantly well as well, but video is six times more engaging than photos. Great example of that, Universal Pictures. Again, I could probably pick out a ton of publishers, but for the purpose of this, Always a great one to look at is movie houses. So British, so Universal Pictures UK is a really, really good example of how they get their message out to market in a very, very simple way. Um, and again, they hit all three elements of this as well. So brand, you know, I guess endorsement there from Good Housekeeping, which is brilliant. Judy Dazzles. Um, you've got the hashtag there, Victorian Abdul. So really, really clear. If you click on the hashtag, you can go and follow all of the conversations happening around that film release at the moment. And then lastly as well, what do you want them to do? You want them to go and book tickets. Not just any tickets, the best tickets in the house as well. And then of course you've got the video, which will auto play as well. That kind of ticks every single box. It's a perfect example of a tweet in my books. 
Next up, the hashtag. Again, I'm not going to spend too, too long on this as well, but we always get asked what's the best hashtag to use. We'll come up with so many hashtag ideas for people. And honestly, the, sim the most simple are always the best. There you go, DigiConnect17. Perfect. Nailed it. Well done, guys. Um, <laughs> but be, <laughs> be deliberate, OK? Don't overuse it. Also, make sure you're planning it out as well. People aren't just going to uptake uh, on, your, on your hashtag. They are not going to do that as well. You almost have to treat it like its own little campaign in terms of you seeding it as well. So make sure you have a launch. Make sure you have a pre-launch. Make sure you're using it in other media. Exactly as we we're talking about BT Sport, publishers and broadcasters coming to the platform, use it, you, know, you need to amplify your content as well. So make sure you're using it in your out of home. Make sure you're using it in any other way that you can have that hashtag across every single part of your media plan and then you can direct conversation and most importantly as well the hashtag use it to measure conversation as well that's how we like to think of it on twitter as well okay so some hopefully some good tips around around using that then and then i've kind of got 11 essentials for you as well and some of these are really really simple but there's a, a number of brands who are doing these a number of publishers who are doing these really really well is anyone from hearst here well done, guys. Thank God for that. Um, you do exceptionally well. Um, but there's a couple of really, really simple ways that people should be looking. And again, use these guys as, as kind of a, a, a test of excellence in terms of what they're doing on the platform at the moment. But um, Squire, Squire UK, great follow if you don't already, lads. Um, and again, they keep it very, very simple. They keep their profile up to date. They keep their avatar up to date. Um, it's simple, but again, the speed at which people are moving through the timeline, you need to keep this sort of stuff regularly updated as well and make it very, very obvious. Be very, very blatant on the platform. I can't emphasize that enough as well. Um, also, write in a snappy blog. So it doesn't get much snappier than this, style and substance. But if you speak to any Esquire fan, you'll know if somebody says star and substance, they'll know it's a square. Equally, L have done a fantastic job as well here as well. The official Twitter account of L UK. They're being very explicit about what it is, what it's first for, for fashion, feminism, beauty. Um, and yeah, just basically dictating exactly what you're going to be finding in that timeline as you're following L UK as well. Very, very simple, but again, a lot of publishers don't do it. Put your location down as well. There's so many multiple handles, um, especially if, you have glo if you're a global, global brand, a global publisher. There's loads and loads of different, um, uh, uh, different handles that you could be going to. Make sure you, you've got your contacts going to the right one as well. So really, really important having that there and having your link as well. Having your link is absolutely key. And again, it will help you show up when even in Google as well. It, help, it really, really helps in terms of your, your search. We work hand in glove with Google as well. So really, really important that you're doing it as well. Something, again, if you don't follow The Economist, it's a great, great publish, publication to be following. Um, they do a wonderful job. I did a, a talk here a few um, a month or so ago with Digital Journeys um, about bots and AI. And The Economist do a very, very simple but effective job in terms of delivering the, the news stories to their audience as well. So we call it customer support in this element as well. But turning on this message button is a brilliant way to engage your audience. So what these guys do is, is enable, if you go and click on the message button now, start following The Economist, um, you can actually have stories sent to you every day, be it about politics, be it about money markets, whatever that may be, whatever your interest is, and you'll get pushed, those pushed into a DM to you every single morning. It's a really, really great example. It's a lovely user experience. And again, um, bots and AI and this element of kind of customer support um, isn't going away. So it's really, really a good time to be embraced that as well. Please come and speak to us if you want any advice there. But start using that. It's a great one to, great one to be testing out as well. Next up, getting involved as well. Also knowing we're not to get involved as well, but we're not going to talk about that today, okay? Um, but getting involved. So in style here, doing a brilliant job, again, around London Fashion Week as well, putting their content out there, a nice little link through to, to their actual page as well. So again, you can just click on this link as well. We also have clickable video, which performs exceptionally well, actually even way better than the photos as well. But they're doing a really good job here in terms of getting involved in the market. And also adding GIFs as well. Twitter users love GIFs. Everyone loves GIFs, right? Everyone loves GIFs. It's the quickest way of getting, other than an emoji, of getting your message out there or getting your emotion out there as well. So again, making sure you're adding GIFs. And we've made that really, really simple as well now. So within the, twi uh, within the Twitter platform, within the, um, within the actual platform itself, it's very, very easy to add GIFs. Super easy to add GIFs as well, just from, uh, just from your phone as well. And then also adding video as well. 
So everyone would have seen our partnership with Periscope, a company we bought a couple of years ago now. We, also, we now have launched Periscope Producer. That enables you to have live HD content. So if you wanted to broadcast your next event or your next fashion show, you can actually do it yourself with Periscope Producer as well. You don't need um, a whole film crew down there. You can actually be doing it, plugging it into an HD system and broadcasting live onto Twitter, not, not through Periscope, it'll actually come within your feed on Twitter as well. And again, it's an incredible experience to get you closer to your audience as well. So video, I'm sure, like I said before, I'm sure you've heard loads about today, but it's the absolute future for our platform. It's what our, our users absolutely love. And then making content as well. So hopefully most of you guys would have seen the moments feature on there. If you tap on the magnifying glass, you'll be able to scroll through to moments and you'll see what's actually trending today and see the moments associated with that. Again, sticking on the fashion theme, uh, this something fashion, Kim Kardashian. I got roped into putting this one in. Um, but Kim Kardashian um, on the front of Allure magazine here. Um, and again, Allure have done a fantastic job of actually making a moment, a moment basically just bringing the story to life. So adding their content in, showing a front page of the magazine that's coming out again, driving users to actually go and buy that. And then also picking up a couple of users' tweets as well, which is quite a nice thing as well. Asking for their, um, asking their permission, of course, but putting those tweets actually into the moment. So you're almost creating this, our version of a story, if you like, um, within Twitter as well. And again, in terms of the content, in terms of how it looks, it's so much more engaging than just putting 140 characters up there. This is about taking the story on and really, really helping it live beyond, beyond the 140 characters on the platform as well. Um, obviously, Halloween coming up. This was one from last year um, that Penguin Books did. Um, and again, a really nice way of getting your users to interact with you as well. So conducting a poll. Everyone loves a poll, right? especially a power on Halloween. Um, but very, very simple to do. Again, you can literally create them within minutes on the platform, but it's a great way in terms of engaging with your audience and also, again, rewarding your audience if you wanted to as well. And then making your content relevant as well. So the FT do a really, really good job of this, actually. This was an um, example from a couple of days ago. Again, just tweeted out, um, late morning, UK time, but to the US, in, with the US in mind, in terms of you guys are just waking up, Here's what you've missed. Here's our biggest story, our most read story of the day. So keeping stuff relevant, but in real time. Remember what I said before, Twitter's about what's happening now, not about what happened a few hours ago, not what happened last week. It's what's happening now. So it's bringing that story to that audience and being super, super relevant. And then this is quite a nice example, again, going back to Burberry, giving behind the scenes content. So a lot of the broadcasters do this fantastically well. Sky News do this brilliantly well with their Periscope, uh, Periscope uh, producer. So they will show you when it cuts to the adverts what's actually happening behind the scenes um, and not everything you want to see. But it's a really, really, uh, it's a great kind of insight into what happens. Burberry are doing it brilliantly as well. So going behind the scenes of the show, really building up the story of their event. But again, this is something you can do daily, just keeping that interest up for your users and being a point of difference over your competition. So I guess, just to kind of sum up there, if you want to be what's happening, then you need to be on Twitter. And then if you're interested in what's happening, if you want to know what's happening now, then you need to be on Twitter as well.